Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we're going to talk about the most common problems that you can have with a portable roll forming machine. Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. My name is Jeff Hawk. I'm with Sheffield Metals. Today we have with us Ben Bradley from New Tech Machinery. And we also have an SSQ2 machine uh, produced by New Tech Machinery. I'm the technical director for Sheffield. Ben is in the service department. And today we're going to be talking about the most common problems that you can come across when dealing with a portable roll forming machine. One of the problems that I personally see a lot is setting up your entry guide correctly. Um, if your entry guide isn't set up correctly, that all that metal going through the machine isn't going to form right because it's not going to be in the right position of the rollers. Uh, so it's critical that when you're setting up the roll forming machine that your entry guide is set up correct for the panel profile you're running, the width of the coil that you're running, and that everything's tight when it's going for in the machine. Other issues as far as that I uh, notice is setup of your coil on your overhead. This plays into your entry guide. If your coil is not positioned correctly, even though your entry guide may be, it could possibly feed your coil in at an angle, which would result in a tapered panel leg. And with New Tech, in the manual, they have a chart that shows where the coil should be on the expandable arbor based on the panel profile that you're running, correct? Correct. Okay, correct. so two inch panel might be different than an inch and a half panel and so on and so forth. Curve it in your panel, whether it's uphill, downhill, uh, you can get curvature on one side of your panel. Uh, how is that something that we correct in a new tech panel? In our tooling sets, we have what are called camber stations that are generally at the sheer end of the machine. Uh, different profiles will either have one per panel side or possibly two. Um, and what that does, it allows you to raise and lower the, the rollers to straighten out your panel, depending on whether it's curving uphill or downhill. And I'm correct in saying that you can have it just on one side of your panel, right? Yes. Like you can have one side might be perfectly straight, one side might be bowing up. Right, so it's always a good idea just to take a look at your panel, run a sample panel, take a look at it, see which panel, which leg is straight or not straight and only adjust accordingly. Right on. One of the other things I've noticed is uh, the panel finish of a, of a metal panel getting messed up during roll forming. The coil goes in and when it comes out, the panel has scratches on it. Um, you know, some common problems I know of that is, you know, whether the uh, coil not being wrapped properly, so it's getting dirt, you know, it's not being stored properly or you're driving down the street with it on your machine, things can get on it there and then it transfers through to the roll forming. Things like if you're using film, film getting built up on your rollers, uh, that can all have effects on the panel finish. So you wanna make sure that your rollers are clean, you wanna make sure the material you're putting into the rollers is clean, and that way the finished product comes out as nice as possible. Other common issues with uh, material and the finished product is uh, scratches, like Jeff said, but that can also come from the shear and not having your shear assembly and shear die set up properly where the die itself is actually scraping the paint off of the metal. So double check your shear alignment and setup. Yeah, another thing I noticed with the shear too is if the shear blades aren't positioned correctly, instead of cutting the seam or cutting the finished panel, you're more crushing the vertical legs of it. Correct. Um, so I've seen that where either the shear blade isn't set up in the correct position so you get that slicing action or if they don't have uh, enough lubricant on it, Lubricant else is also another important aspect to cutting. Right, because now you're, you know, you don't have that lubricant while you're getting the cut. Now you have a rougher cut than you would have normally. Exactly. Another problem that can come up in roll forming is oil canning. Um, it's not as particularly common during the roll forming process it is, as it is once it gets on the roof, but it does happen. Um, issues that can cause oil canning in the roll forming process is obviously number one, the coil. If the coil isn't slit right. If the coil has oil canning in it before it gets formed, obviously it's going to have oil canning in it when it gets after it gets formed. For roll formers that have uh, multiple profile capability, um, the alignment of the tooling itself, making sure that the tooling gets in there in the correct position so we're not compressing or directing the coil um, as it doesn't want to be. So that the misalignment of the tooling can also cause oil canning right. issues. And I know too, it's not necessarily oil canning, but when it comes to say the bead rollers or specifically striations, you can put those striations in really deep. Right, you know, there's a kind of a, a window 
where it works. You right. Know? I mean, I've seen it where, you know, I cut a small panel sample and I can take it and bend it and you can hear it making that popping sound. Right. Because the striations are in so deep. So, uh, I mean, there is a limit to how deep you want certain structure in your panel set as well when it comes to that. Right. Other silly problems, you know, uh, like computer not turning on. Uh, you know, one of the reasons for that is the, one of the cables might not be screwed in all the way. Uh, gas motor not starting up is leaving the e-stop button pulled out overnight, draining the battery. Battery dying or your uh, fuel line is you're turned off and right. your engine's not getting uh, fuel. These are common problems, but they're easily avoidable problems. I think one of the best things you can do in general is read the manual, go through it, learn all the things that they talk about because I assume a lot of these, I know in new techs anyways, a lot of these problems are corrected. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of the things that's great about new text manual is they talk about knife roller adjustments. Right. If the panel leg isn't coming out vertically for perfectly straight, which might change based on the type of material that you're running, lighter material versus thickest, thicker material. They talk about how you can make an adjustment for that right. to get those Perfect. legs at a perfect 90. We talk about all the different eccentric shaft adjustments, which refers to what Jeff was just talking about, and alignment, tooling change. There's a lot of helpful information in there. So it's always a great resource to have with you while you're out on the job site. All right, so besides, besides you know, going over the manual and knowing what it says is being properly trained on the machine by a new tech representative, having somebody that works on the machines, you know, all the time, go over it with you, get you started off on the right foot, I think will help avoid a lot of these problems moving forward so that they don't become common problems and uh, you know the common is kind of left out of it right so thanks for watching be sure to check out our next video on machine safety if you have any questions comment down below and we'll see you next time